We're glad to know you're still there. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And right now we're going to look at the headlines on some of our national dailies. And um, we are being joined by Professor Sani Fage. Uh, good morning and welcome to the program, Professor. Good morning and thank you for having me. Yeah. In Lagos, it is quite hot. I don't know how it is where you are right now. I hope the, the heat is not as bad as it is down south. Uh, the heat is too much here, actually. Wow. Okay. And uh, some people are taking advantage and selling water the way they should not be sold. Selling fun. The prices for fan has gone up. The prices for AC have gone up. Uh, the price for water has gone up. <laughs> and I don't know where we're going. And everybody's talking about the fact that it is, uh, um, it is uh, dollar that has increased. That's why everything is happening the way it is. Is the cost of living a little bit better up north? Because down south, it is quite bad. No, I, I think it is, is, it is bad here too. Um, I don't know if I can say perhaps it's even worse than what it is in down south. Uh, because uh, virtually everything is counted in dollar. Uh, even peanut or groundnut, when you want to buy it, the people will talk of uh, dollar. So I think uh, this dollar thing has um, raised the issue. And besides, uh, is the petrol, you know, and other things. These are the things that uh, make things very expensive down here in the north. Okay. We heard that the black market has... Uh a few days ago, uh, sold at 2,000 Naira in a place like Sokoto, and uh, some other states uh, sold even more than that. And um, we just hope that we will find our feet as a nation and uh, let some people breathe a sigh of relief. I'm saying some people because there are some others that are not feeling the bite that everybody else is feeling. Well, let's begin with uh, Nature News this morning. Nature News uh, leads with... Uh, uh, no, let me not just use the one that Nature News leads with. Uh, UN commits $3 million to combat anticipated flooding in Somalia. Um, even though Somalia is far away, uh, my, my worry is that the, the flooding will come again. And our NIMASA and all the relevant agencies have told us that um, Nigeria, some of the states are in in danger of uh, experiencing this flood. But I, I seem not to see anything that is being done deliberately to make sure that this flooding does not have the kind of effect that it has been having all other years. Uh, maybe the dam will not be, uh, the water in the dam will not be released this year, I don't know. But whether or not it's released, there's going to be flooding. Is there not something that the government can deliberately do to avert the disaster that uh, might come with, with anticipated flooding? Yeah, you see, in the Mesa, I think some two weeks ago, uh, gave a warning that um, 30 out of 36 states in Nigeria are prone to flood uh, this year, and uh, as usual. Um, the, the problem is we get information, we get these things, and but the authorities don't do anything until when it happens, then we take a fire brigade approach. So I think um, there are a lot of things that the government should do, and uh, the best way is uh, the preventive measure. Now, the issue of dam will just affect some few states, but we are talking of uh, 36 out of, uh, I mean 30 out of 36. So I think uh, we need to address this issue seriously. Part of it this, uh, is global warming. Second is the fact that we don't get ready on, uh, you know, we don't prepare on issues until when they happen. And uh, thirdly, if you look at it, we encroach uh, even the rivers and other areas. You know, we don't plan, we do things haphazardly both the government and the people, and uh, so that is why we are prone to this kind of uh, uh, challenges and problems always. And uh, the, the worst part of it is that we don't seem to take a lesson. Uh, the issue of blood has been year in, year out, but virtually every year 
we get uh, we we are arrested. I mean, caught and preferred. Okay, there's this 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 story that I don't know. Uh, let me just read it out. The, the the headline says: Firewood, charcoal smoke kill ninety eight thousand Nigerian women annually, according to experts. <laughs> I'd like your comment. Let me, know, let me know see what my reservations are. I'd like your comments. 98,000 women, women annually. Yeah, you see, this could have been just an estimate because actually uh, charcoal and firewood uh, is the main or are the main source of energy uh, to the common man. Already gas is not affordable. So we, we resort to that and uh, we risk a lot of uh, things. So I think this also shows um, the problem of, uh, with our policies. You know, the government is encouraging people not to resort to that. But at the same time, it is making alternative sources very expensive. Already, gas is not uh, affordable. Uh, to the ordinary person, uh, electricity is not affordable. So what do you expect? People have to eat. And as a result, they resort to, uh, you know, charcoal and firewood, and uh, they are exposed to such hazard. And beside the human toll, we are also uh, putting, the, you know, the environment at a risk because this charcoal, this uh, firewood, we just do, they don't, don't come from the blues. We have to deforest uh, our forests. Uh, in order to get it. So if you go down, you see how forests are being... Uh, we seem to have lost the audio from uh, Professor Sage. We do hope that he can rejoin us as soon as possible. We're talking about the fact that the government is... I don't know where the data came from, but they say 98,000 women uh, die of smoke every year. Uh, okay, Professor, you were saying we lost your audio at some point. Go ahead, please. Yeah, what I was saying is that um, this issue may be just uh, an estimate. Perhaps if uh, real statistics are taken, it will be higher than that. And what it shows is it shows the failure of uh, policies. You see, the government is uh, encouraging people not to resort to firewood and charcoal. But at the same time, the alternative sources of energy are so expensive, are beyond the reach of the ordinary person. <clears throat> okay, we are talking of gas, we are talking of electricity. These are all uh, things that will uh, minimize or eliminate that hazard of smoke and other <laughs> dangerous things, but they are beyond the reach of the pers uh, ordinary person. So that is why people resort to it. And like I said, beside the human toll, this also has effect on the environment uh you know we are talking of global warming but at the same time you know people have to resort to cutting down trees and forests uh, in order to survive so i think this is what the government needs to address seriously mm. yeah people cut down trees to do furniture to, to do a lot of other things and we're talking about climate change and the need to plant more trees and all that a jacuta steel complex is not working so anything that we could have had alternative in steel we still go back to wood because that's the only thing that we have and then people are using wood to cook and do other things and even iron their clothes because no light or no power and then gas like you said is very um, very expensive but the, the other thing, the other headline again on uh, Nature News is almost related to that. Why Merua thrives in uh, Nigeria's major cities. And the writers on that story or that headline are Water Vendors Pose Health Hazard, NAVDAC Task on Hygiene Enforcement. Okay, so, you know, Merua in every city, even the estates that do not allow Okada in, they do not allow... Uh, tricycles in. They don't allow anybody just to go inside. You'll still find Merua m moving around, hawking water, selling water to people because water is not available. But now NAVDAC is saying uh, everybody should enforce hygiene and then th that the water vendors pose a health hazard. I don't know what your comment is on that. Yeah, it's true they pose the danger, but uh, this one too is part of our uh, Problem. This is 64 years after our independence. We cannot afford portable water. 
You know, if you look at it, the irony of it is that uh, you got some government houses, you know, uh, where you have the, the governor. If you stay there, you see uh, a truck of water going inside the government house, which means even the government houses don't have it. And the other thing is, if you are to take a simple statistics uh, from the government house in any place, uh, go around uh, a radius of about 30 kilometers or so, you'll go to places where there is no tap water, no running water, and so on. So people have to drink water. So that is why the Merua uh, systems uh, thrive, because people have to uh, drink water. And the, the thing is that uh, there is no hygiene there. So we have, uh, we are lucky we don't have, you know, waterborne diseases epidemic of it, but uh, we shouldn't be always counting on luck on luck. We have to do something about it. So there is this danger of um, diseases. Uh, you know, Nabdak said it, but people cannot abide by that because, like I say, they have to survive. So I think the issue is less the issue of uh, water be a thing of the past. After all, uh, 64 years of independence is not a small time. And uh, that is why you see uh, any year that you have campaigned, you know, you see leaders campaigning that you vote me, I'm going to provide water for you. Countries that are far smaller than us, that are poorer than us, you know, the issue of pipeline water is uh, a forgotten history, but we are still grappling with it. So I think this is pale, an indication also of the failure of our system. It really is a failure. I, I, I was... I was seeing photographs in, in some time, in some years past, uh, where pipe bond water was being commissioned in some communities as soon as we had our independence. In the 60s, we had some communities that had pipe bond water. Now, there's no community with pipe bond water. Maybe a, a few estates here and there would have pipe bond water, but we don't have them anymore. I don't know why Nigeria seems to be growing backwards instead of forwards. You know, things that, that we, should, we should not even be counting as things to campaign with. We are now using them to campaign. Good road, which should have been a, a given that once you enter there, you'll, you'll do it. Schools that should have been built, uh, water that should have been provided, and every other thing. We are now using them as campaign. I just don't know why we're growing backwards, because that's the opinion of a lot of people, that we may be growing backwards instead of forwards. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, let's go over to the Business NG. That's the next newspaper that we are going to um, look at. The biggest headline here is uh, Tinubu's financial shakeup praise skepticisms echo across Nigeria. Where do you stand? In praise or you're skeptical? Okay. Uh, we've lost the audio of Professor Sage once again. Uh, we're hoping he will rejoin us. In the meantime, let me just take the headlines on uh, the business NG until he's able to reconnect. Um, inflation war. CBN prioritizes inflation over employment or unemployment, sorry. Nigeria's um, dollar bonds hit four months high. Investors demand higher returns. The headline we were on to before we lost the audio of Professor was Tinubu's financial shakeup praise skepticisms echo across Nigeria. And I was asking the professor where he stood. Was he skeptical or was he full of praise of the Tinubu financial shakeup? Uh, we also have. Yeah. Okay, uh, Prof, glad to have you back. We lost your audio again. Oh, yes. So yes. where do you we stand? Challenges. Actually, I have a mixed feeling. Uh, there are areas that I have raised, like, uh, you know, the issue of uh, the central bank, you know, uh, that uh, it establishing a leadership, you know, checking the system. That is a very good uh, thing that uh, people have to welcome it. But actually, uh, where I am skeptical and uh, where I am opposed even to it is, is the issue of, uh, you know, this Naira uh, devaluation and other things, and also uh, the issue of uh, 
uh, subsidy removal. I have been very much opposed to that because what I believe is that uh, the government or government anywhere is not a business enterprise. Uh, its central concern should be I don't know what's going on. The networks seem to be acting up this morning. We hope the professor can join us again. Okay, Prof, I don't know what is happening to the network. Is it, is it angry with you? I, I, I guess it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the network is, is bad this, uh, today. Okay. Now, when, in answering the question that you were answering, I'd like you to add this headline to it because uh, when the question was, are you on the side of praise or on the side of skepticism, and you were saying you had mixed feeling. Um, we have this headline which is saying, CBN loans federal government 3.8 trillion naira in six months. Borrowing spree continues. We remember when the CBN governor came on board, he said, no more, uh, okay, let me use the words of the president for this. Borrowing the, pre, uh, the federal government, uh, CBN borrowing the federal government money gone. Now we have seen 3.8 trillion naira in just six months. The CBN has borrowed the federal government or it has loaned the federal government, that's the correct word to use, it has loaned the federal government 3.8 trillion naira in six months so I, I don't know really what the difference is or after one year what we'll be expecting from this central bank which in some regards you are having praise for yeah no i said the, the, the uh, shape uh, you know the shake up in the central bank is what i'm praising but uh, you see the bank and post in terms of uh, policies is what i'm uh, very skeptical and uh, in, in fact i'm against that uh, you see, the people, we Nigerians are told that the issue of ways and means is uh, gone forever. And now we are just changing the name. Uh, within six uh, months, uh, we had this uh, six point something trillion that you have said. And it is not taken by the end of the year or by the end of the term of uh, the government will be much deeper in uh, this debt. What initially, when the government said they are dealing, are doing away with it, people welcome it. And now they have turned around and they are taking it back again. So this is one of the reasons for the skepticism in terms of uh, the economic policies of uh, uh, the president. Back and pause is one thing. Today we say something, tomorrow we roll it back and go back. The second layer, and most importantly is if you look at all these things, it seems we are doing things up other delay. There is no concrete plan that we are in point A today. We want to go to point B, and this is our roadmap how we're going to do it. So this is why I am also part of, but also are skeptical about, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the economic policies. Mm. Okay. Um now, inflation war is still on the CBN. Inflation war, CBN prioritizes inflation over unemployment. Uh, I don't know in this report which is, in this situation, which is the cat and which is the horse. They are prioritizing inflation and sort of neglecting unemployment. Uh, some people will think unemployment should take the uh, front burner while uh, inflation takes uh, a, a backstage and all that. So we don't know. Uh, what is your comment? CBN for them, their priority is inflation. You see, this is a classical neoliberal uh, recipe. You know, what the neoliberalism said is that uh, inflation is more dangerous than, uh, oh, you know, unemployment. So that is why yeah, the argument is the more inflation you have, uh, the more unemployment you are going to have. Because people will now ask for more raise, like what you are seeing now. And then the industries and other sectors could not cope up, so they have to return to the people. So to them, uh, inflation is uh, the cost. Uh, which should come before the cut, which is, uh, uh, you know, uh, unemployment. But uh, to the Keynesianists, uh, it is the other way around, that it is um, unemployment that will cause uh, 
all the problems. So I think here, what we need to do is not to look at whether this causes this or this causes, but rather let's face what is the cause of the problem? What is the cause of inflation in Nigeria? The way we are going, borrowing, you know, uh, borrowing, the regulation, and uh, uh, opening our market business will only increase inflation as we have seen. Uh, within the last nine months or so, okay, from May 29th to maybe 11 months since we took uh, these two measures, we have seen inflation skyrocketing uh, to a point that we have never seen it in the history of Nigeria. So I think this should have told our policymakers that the problem is inflation is just a, a symptom of the problem. The real cause of the problem are the policies that we are taking, and that is why we have inflation, and that is why we are going to have unemployment, and that is why we'll continue to go down deeper and deeper. So unless we address these issues that uh, the, the IMF is pushing down our throat, we are not going to go anywhere. Palliatives will not solve it, you know, uh, panicking, uh, panic address will not solve it, and all other measures that we are taking will not solve it. What we need is a concrete plan to get out of this debt trap that we have put ourselves into. And uh, unless we do that, we'll remain, we'll still be going deeper and deeper into the problem. You know, let's go to the Guardian newspaper and still take another uh, story about the CBN. This seems to be uh, the reigning um, headline today. FX rates, that's the Guardian newspaper now, FX rates harmonization. CBN abandons unification policy, reintroduces discriminatory rates. They came up with this unification policy. Now they have gone back to old ways. It's same old, same old. The same CBN that came blazing, uh, with blazing guns in both hands are now going back to the same policies that they condemned and said they had jettisoned and are now giving us a new one. Now the unification policy is gone and they have reintroduced discriminatory, discriminatory rates, according to this report here. This is what I told you just a little while ago, that one of the source of our apprehension is the back and forth. Today you say you are going to do something, and tomorrow you now change it to another thing. You know, initially when they say they are going to have a unified uh, rate, people welcome it. And now they are, they are changing it. Uh, even in some places they are talking of, uh, one of the reasons of this arbitrage is uh, uh, the discriminatory or the differential uh, value of uh, this thing. And now they are coming back to it. So I think uh, this haphazard way, like I said it, I will repeat to myself, this haphazard way of doing things is a fire brigade approach. And it will not solve the problem. By the time you do something, and tomorrow you come and change it, the next tomorrow you go back to it, will always be. Okay, we'll still just manage the network as it is. Professor, we're waiting on this end, hoping that you will rejoin us. There are other headlines on the Guardian newspaper that I'd just like to bring to your attention. Presidential fleet gobs $8 million in two years amid safety concerns. Um, we also have Lamido slams northern governors over security meeting in U.S. Um, PDP divided as Obi uh, group rejects Igodalo and APC kicks as PDP wins all seats in Oyo local government area polls. We have those stories on the Guardian newspaper. We're hoping a uh, professor will join us um, to uh, give his thoughts on those headlines. Meanwhile, we'll move to the Punch newspaper and just take some, some uh, other headlines. On the Punch newspaper, uh, the biggest headline here is petrol scarcity. Fuel crisis worsens as depots divert PMS to Abuja. NNPC ration supply to depots, orders operators to prioritize loading, in Abu loading to Abuja, queues spread in Lagos, 
Ogun orders station raise pump price as black market thrives. Removing fuel subsidies saved Nigeria from bankruptcy. That is according to Tunubu. Nigeria rebo or Naira rather, rebounds to 1,275 Naira per dollar at the parallel market. Um, then uh, we have uh, smaller headlines there. Rivers explosion. FRSC blames drivers as president governors mourn victims. Abiodun orders residents evacuation after Ogun gas explosion. Okay, uh, Prof, you're back with us now. Thank God. Um, sure, you know. Yes. Can, okay, let's move to another headline. Uh, we, have, we have talked about the CBN and uh, you expressed disappointment in the back and forth and all that. Now, the Northern Governors had security meeting in U.S. Lamido slams Northern Governors over security meeting in U.S. That can be seen in page 9 of the Guardian newspaper. What are your thoughts? I think actually going to U.S. Uh, on a security issue is uncomfortable, is insensitive uh, on the situation. After all, we have the crisis here in the north on ground. Why should you go to U.S. and uh, try to solve it there? You know, uh, it's a waste of resources. And uh, like I said, it's insensitive to the feelings of Nigerians, and uh, especially we here in the north, where we are feeling the brunt of uh, this, guy, this insecurity. And yet you take... Uh, huge uh, resources, taxpayers' resources, and go there and do nothing. And the end of it, nothing will happen except for the waste of our resource. Now, if they are serious in addressing the issue, they should have addressed it here. We have experts, we have the thing on ground, and it has been persistent in so many places. If you take, for example, Borno and North East, it's now over 15 years that they are having uh, this problem, the North West here, we are having it for nine years, and yet you just go to U.S. and say this is where you are going to address it. I actually agree with uh, uh, Lani to 100%, even if not 110%, because, like I said, this is uh, insensitive and in fact, uh, uh, you know, uh, lack of concern uh, to the actual situation where people are more concerned with what they will get out of it rather than to address the actual problem, to sit down and address it. Okay. Um, now, there is this headline as well, uh, which is saying presidential fleet gulps $8 million in two years amid safety concerns. In two years, that means part of this uh, is uh, the administration of President Muhammad Buhari, former President Muhammad Buhari, who promised that uh, the presidential fleet was going to be cut down because he didn't have any need for, the, for it. And also, we also have this government that came up and said they were going to cut cost of governance and all that. And the presidential fleet is still on. And even their safety concerns, there was a rumor at some point that our president had to take a commercial flight to a particular place because the, uh, the, the flights or the, the the planes broke down, the jets broke down. So we don't know what is really happening. Eight billion dollars, or eight million dollars rather, not billion, eight million dollars in two years. That's concerning for me. Yeah, you see, when you combat uh, that eight million dollars to Naira, at the current rate, it is going to be how many billions that have been uh, wasted, on, wasted on the issue. Now, yes, it's true. Part of the two years is uh, one year is that of uh, former president, and one year is for this uh, president. So, one, you know, we were hoping when the, the former government, the former president said they are going to cut the presidential fleet and put it into Nigerian airways, and this never happened. And now, uh, we also uh, were hoping initially when this government came out and said they are going to uh, cut the, uh, the cost of governance and we are seeing uh, nothing that happened. So uh, this is um, 
you know, uh, highly disappointing to Nigerians. And uh, above all, uh, as you hinted it, alluded to it, I say it was last week when they were having something in the, the, some of the Arab countries. Uh, two of the flights could not even operate, so uh, we had to, the president had to take a commercial flight to attend the meeting. So which means it's a double jeopardy. We spent eight uh, a million dollars on the flight, and yet they have not served the purpose. Uh, we have to take commercial flight to do it. And the other thing is, how secure are they? They are too dangerous. If you look at uh, other clients who are more, you know, developed than us, they don't have even a single uh, plate in their presidential thing. Take, for example, UK. The prime minister doesn't have a plate. You go to somewhere, they don't have it. But uh, here we are, we have how many they talk. Some will say eight, some will say more than eight. Whatever it is, it's a waste. It's part of the cost of governance. It's part of, uh, you know, the insensitivity of our leaders to the ordinary person. An ordinary person in Nigeria, they say over 63% of Nigeria cannot afford three square meal, and you are spending such a huge amount of money on uh, presidential plate, and they are not serving the purpose. So I think um, something has to be done. Our democracy should be working for the people, not for the elite. Okay, let's move to the Punch newspaper and take two headlines at once. Petrol scarcity, fuel crisis worsens as Abuja depots divert PMS to Abuja. Uh, the riders are uh, NNPC ration supply to depots, orders operators to prioritize loading to Abuja. Uh, queues spread in Lagos, Ogun, others. Stations raise pump price as black market thrives. Uh, the second headline still on uh, fuel is removing fuel subsidies saved Nigeria from bankruptcy, Tinubu. In whatever order you want to comment, please go ahead. Okay, let me take the as the S you give me, the foreign crisis say uh, that hits Nigeria. You see, it is all over. Like here in Kano now, some filling stations are selling it about 800 and 850. And, uh, you know, uh, if you go to the black market, it's uh, 1,000, 1,000 plus. If you go to Sokoto, one of the newspaper carry it in the black uh, market, it costs about uh, uh, 2,000 naira per liter. So I think this is, this shows the extent, the magnitude of uh, the problem. And many people, uh, sleeping in the pilling station, the pure pilling station that uh, are the dispensing oil or are selling fuel. Uh, you spend the whole day, the whole night there, and you at, uh, end up getting it at about uh, 850 naira. So I think this is a very serious problem, and uh, it's also a very serious problem that uh, NNPC is diverting it to Abuja as if Abuja is the only place where. It's, all, it's only in Nigeria, while other places are having these challenges. So I think this is a very serious uh, problem. The other thing is, uh, you know, when the president was uh, saying, telling, the, you know, the world that uh, removing subsidy and the Naira value will save Nigeria from bankrupt. This is what I've said earlier on. Government is not a business enterprise. The goal of government should be the welfare and security of Nigeria. With the removal of subsidy, uh, quite okay, let's say, uh, let's say it's true that uh, they have saved the government from bankrupt. But how many Nigerians uh, have been put into uh, poverty? So I think this is what uh, our leaders should tell themselves, that, uh, that uh, they, they are elected by Nigerians, and it is a democratic government. The Nigerians were hopeful that their condition would be better off, and yet uh, the government is counting how much it has saved. Look at the issue of poverty is on the increase, hunger is on the increase, insecurity is on the increase, inflation is on the increase, unemployment is on the increase, and yet we are beating our chest and saying that we have saved money, which will have saved the country from bankrupt. We haven't seen or we are denying the time bomb that we are building with uh, this kind of policy. Mm. 
Okay, uh, well, <laughs> just uh, in one minute, if we can, uh, Naira rebounds to 1,275 Naira to a dollar in, at the parallel market. Uh, we don't know about the official market, but this story is about the parallel market, 1,002. At some point, it got to 1,004 even. It went back to 1,004. Was it on Friday or something like that? Now it's 1,002, and uh, they're saying Naira has rebounded. Okay, everything is going to be all right. What do you feel? Very fast before we wrap up. I, I feel so bad about it. Uh, to me, Naira should not uh, be more than what uh, the government uh, you know, uh, inherited it. That was around 700 or something. By the time it reached more than 1,000, I think that doesn't show anything positive. Rather, uh, we are just seeing uh, what uh, we believe is right. But uh, to, uh, to us, I think it's a very wrong thing that Naira uh, appreciate uh, to 120, I mean, 1,200 Naira. Okay. Uh, well, that's the much we can take on of the press this morning. We'd like to thank you, Prof, for coming on the show and sharing your thoughts. Thank you. Despite the interruption, uh, thank you very much. Uh, it is a nice, well, let me not say it's a Nigerian thing, but we are quite understand. And uh, we've been talking with Professor Kamilu Sani Fage, Department of Political Science, Bayero University in Kano, on Off the Press this morning. We're going to take a short break, and when we return, we're going to be talking with our guest on the first hot topic. Stay with us. <laughs>